Hello passengers, my name is Jonah and welcome aboard to another video. Today marks a special and important day in American railroading. Today marks the anniversary of the debut of an engine that was a sign of the start of the future of American railroading after recovering from the Great Depression. The train that most would say that started the process was none other than the New York Central's Commodore Vanderbilt, also known for the nickname the Majestic Commodore. So you may be wondering if you didn't know, why and how did the engine become the start of the future of railroading? Well here is how the story happened. In early 1934, the country was coming out of the Great Depression years, which is a very tough time in American history between August 1929 to March 1993. The railroads also felt the economic distress and something was needed to inspire more in interest in the railroads. Streamlining seemed to be the coming thing in industrial design, like for example, the Chrysler Motor Car Company introduced the quote-unquote airflow design, inaugurating the era of streamlining and transportation. So why not try it on the railroad? You may have heard of the Vanderbilt University. Did you know that it was initially found on the gifts of Cornelius Vanderbilt? That same Cornelius Vanderbilt was also known as Commodore and he built his wealth in shipping and railroads. The Commodore was a shrewd businessman and his patriarch to the well-known Vanderbilt family. Vanderbilt purchased controlling interests in several railroads including the Hudson River Railroad, the Lakeshore and Michigan Southern Railway, and also the New York Central. A man named Carl F. Cantola, a longtime New York Central employee who was an assistant engineer and part of Equipment Engineering Department for over 47 years, proposed a streamlined seam locomotive and design was accepted by corporate officials. He said that he was a bachelor at the time with free time in the evenings. He drew up a pencil sketch of a streamlined design for a Hudson type locomotive. At the office, he presented the sketch to Mr. Paul W. Kiefer. Chief Engineer of Motive Power and Rolling Stock, who was quite taken with the idea. He then showed it to Mr. F. E. Williamson, President of the New York Central. Williamson thought it would be a very good publicity for the railroad and gave them the authority to promptly proceed with this streamlined project. And it became Cantola's job to draw up the working plans from his preliminary sketch. Work was started and then in two months, the plans were drawn and blueprinted design was ready for construction. The president's office advised that the locomotive name would be Commodore Vanderbilt for the founder of the New York Central. Hudson, number 5334 of Class J1E, built by Alco in 1931, was undergoing repairs in the West Albany shops and was selected to receive the streamlining treatment. Cantola's design was modified with a case institute of technology before they began the treatment. On December 27, 1934, exactly 87 years ago today, number 5344 appeared in its new form. The Commodore Vanderbilt was exhibited at the Grand Central Terminal. The New York Times and other newspapers gave it the headline article with photographs and proclaimed it to be the great day for railroads and the beginning of a new era in locomotive design. After a public relations tour of the New York Central system and after the exhibit at Grand Central, she was assigned to haul the 20th Century Limited between Chicago and Toledo. The New York Central introduced the Commodore Vanderbilt as the world's first streamlined high power steam locomotive. They claimed that the streamlining could decrease head air resistance by as much as 36% at speeds of 70 to 90 miles per hour with a corresponding saving of fuel. Number 5344 made history as the first steam engine with the simplified lines of the upside down bathtub style of streamlining. The Commodore Vanderbilt was a very, very important locomotive and it still is to this day. Today is very important because, like I said, exactly 87 years ago, December 27th, 1934, was the day when the Condor Vanderbilt debuted at the Grand Central Terminal. Now, of course, this isn't necessarily a holiday, but it deserves to be recognized as a very important day of this basically becoming the the sign of the future of what railroads would look like in the future. Because after the Commodore Vanderbilt, you then saw trains like the Empire State Express. You then saw trains like the Hiawatha. You then saw trains like the Blue Goose. I could go on with tons and tons of streamlined engines from the same era. And then of course, that leading into the diesel era where you had like the Super Chief and so many other trains that were, of course, like the F7s, like the F3s, all these engines that were made 
all because, or especially the design. All these streamlined designs would not have been made possible if it wasn't for this beautiful engine you see here. So this just shows how much something can lead into bigger things. So you have Chrysler making this airflow car and New York Central came up with the idea or thought that would be a good idea to reinterest the railroads during uh, the recovering of the Great Depression. And so they went ahead and went out along with that design and look at where we are now. It was not possible to get to this, to get to how railroads are now if it wasn't for this glorious engine you see right here. Now, I wouldn't necessarily would have celebrated this video if I did not have a glorious model of the Conor Van Welt right here with me. Now, if you're interested in wondering what this engine is, this is the MTH Rail King Conor Van Welt 464 Hudson. This is the dark gray version. This is from 2017. And so, in order to honor the glorious Conor Van Welt 87 years ago, I think it's time we start this beautiful engine up and run it around the layout for a couple of minutes as we honor the glorious Conor Van Welt that changed American railroading forever.
Marcus Albany. Have a nice day. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Ticketed passengers only. Let me help you with your baggage. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. That marks the conclusion of my special celebrating the 87 year anniversary of when the Commodore Vanderbilt made its debut at the Grand Central Terminal, marking the beginning of the future of American railroading. It's crazy to think that this beautiful and gorgeous engine was on the rails 87 years ago. But it's also crazy to think how far American railroading has come in the last 87 years. The fate of the Commodore was truly saddening as. The Commodore only lasted about three to four years as it was restreamlined in 1937 to look like every other Dreyfus Hudson that was being made. The Commodore was a J1E Hudson while the Dreyfus Hudsons were all J3s. Therefore, 5344 looked much more different than the J3s. And then after a couple of years later, the 
Engine 5344 was unstreamlined and then sadly scrapped in the late 1950s. I can't exactly forgive Murex Intro for restreamlined such a beautiful and unusual engine that was unusual compared to everything else to make it look like everything else that was on the reels. I can't exactly forgive New York Central for making 5344 look like every other engine that was on the reels in the 1938. I can't really forgive New York Central for re-streamlining an engine. I can't exactly forgive New York Central for re-streamlining 5344 to look like every other engine that was on the reels in 1938. When it should look like any I won't really forgive. Uh, I can't really forgive New York Central for restreamlining 5344 to look like every other engine, when of course it was unlike any other engine you ever saw on the rails back in 1934. But the past of the past and the future is the future, so of course I can't do anything about it. But either way, we are still gonna always remember the counter Vanderbilt in the history books and of course, in model railroading. That is gonna do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. This was truly a special video to make because of course, I have a gorgeous model of the Commodore Vanderbilt. And what better way to do this video is of course doing it with a gorgeous model of the Commodore Vanderbilt. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did. Thank you guys for joining me and I'll see you guys at the next station. See you guys next time.